13th of February is when our new pastor is going to be here, so we're having a baptismal, baptismal uh, day uh, for these men and the other six candidates. As I have studied with these candidates, I have witnessed really the power of prayer in all their lives and uh, also um, in the old, especially in the older members. It's just absolutely a wonderful thing to experience. Many things, you know, crop up in the duration of a year and it is absolutely wonderful to see how the Spirit of God deals with them. We are really just his vessels with which he uses to bring his work to its end. But again, too, on another note, unfortunately, we have members who have moved away through circumstances and old age, and we had to bid Naira and Martha uh, farewell this year, although Naira's been in contact with most of us. Unfortunately, too, others have been laid to sleep, and we've had to say goodbye to Aunt Lucy and uh, brother Trevor Sutton. Sickness has, has also played its unfair dues on some of our members, and uh, for their presence and healing, uh, we praise God, our Saviour, and we thank God for the way that he has blessed Lynn and Len uh, uh, through, his, through their burdens of sickness. We thank God that he's been with Basil and June also in their time of sickness. With Mary Ann's back, you know, we just think that, that we have the opportunity to pray for our members, those ones we love very much. Also, concerns of individuals whom we love bring us to our knees as we meditate in prayer on their behalf, and that is really a pleasure. You know, the picture out there of the world stage is one that paints a clear depiction of sorrow, fear, and calamity, as prophesied by Jesus as he foretold the events just before he comes. Matthew 24, 7 talks that there will be earthquakes in diverse places, tsunamis as a result, floods, hunger, famines, and fires. We don't have to go too far across the creek to see where the fires are, are ravaging in our neighbouring country of Australia. Matthew 24, 7 says, Nation will rise against nation. We do have wars. Kingdoms against kingdoms confirm that we have wars. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow old. And that is something that is very relevant, relevant today is that in a lot of uh, homes and families, people, young people grow up without love and they have no respect for anybody. We see it in the newspapers where there's been reports of elderly folk robbed in their homes or abused. And that is simply because the love of many is waxing or growing cold. Matthew 5.37 says, But let your communication be yea, yea, or nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than this cometh of the devil. Let your communication be yes, yes, no, no, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. We said yes, all of us have said yes to uh, the Lord, that we wanted a new, to live a new life with him. And it's only through his power that we can live this life. We have said to him that we would die to our old life and walk in newness of life. Your yes was yes then, and it should be even more today. Amen. The Bible tells us that today is the day of your salvation. Today, if you die daily, you need to be rebaptized with the Holy Spirit every day. You know that the thing that we can't afford, and we really can't afford this, and I'm not speaking in monetary terms, no, even, I, even if I was, you still wouldn't want to deal with it or afford to be able to um, have anything to do with it, and yet so many of us do. And this is something that I've just noticed in one or two areas, we cannot afford to compromise, yet so many of us do it. Compromise in the Christian life is the biggest trap for any Christian and even more so for Seventh-day Adventist believers. It is a cunning tactic of Satan. Compromise, according to the Oxford Dictionary, noun, agreement reached by mutual concession. Agreement reached by mutual concession? Yeah, right. Between who? You and Satan? Or the verb, compromising, 
modify one's opinions bring into disrepute? Modify one's opinions to suit their circumstances or desires. Bring into disrepute the law of God and the law of God's love. We can observe this especially with the Sabbath. It's amazing, you know, how members drive thousands of kilometres on a Sabbath day just so that they can get somewhere for enjoyment or a Sunday activity. No, it's not supposed to be that way. It's God's day made holy by his presence. Oh, it is only over the holidays or once a year that I do this. No, it's compromising. Six days you have to get it all done. Six days by 24 hours. How much more do you need? No, the seventh is God's day. But my Sabbath, says the Lord, is a, is a rest day for you and everybody. How can that gas attendant shopkeeper keep the Sabbath if you prevent him from keeping it because you can't organise your six days? The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. To do what he wants, no, what the Lord wants. But we are just going to shop because they or I forgot or I think I need, no, you don't need anything on the Sabbath day. You've got six days to get it right. But I am tired and I work the most out of everyone. And it's too hot. Oh, it's too cold. I want to stay home. No, it's not true. It's compromise. The opposite to compromise is obedience. We are all called. To obey God. That is our love response to him. And as we have seen in this last quarter's Sabbath school lessons, the Israelites were about to enter the promised land, but 25,000 of them didn't. They died just before entering. How are we, as we stand on the verge of the spiritual promised land, are we ready to go in? Is the Lord going to say to each and every one of us, well done, good and faithful servant, or I don't know you. That is not my prayer. I hope that we are all ready to go. Parents, teach your children about worship. The relationship is about Jesus, what he sees for us in our lives. Brothers and sisters, the time is short, and Jesus has called you all not to compromise, but to become awake and prepared. He warns you not to be like the five foolish virgins, virgins but like the five wise ones having oil in reserve for their lamps. You need the Holy Spirit more today than when you first started your walk. The bridegroom is coming. Compromise places us so close to the back door so that we cannot hear him who is calling, who is knocking on the door of our hearts, the narrow door. As we go on our holidays, please do not leave the word behind behind you. Take your Bibles and read them. You have time, right? You're on holiday. We are not allowed to take off the armour of God even when we're on holiday. And I'd like you to turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 and reading from verse 10. And here we have Paul giving us a very clear illustration. He writes, as it was in his time, a world ruled by Roman leaders and policed by Roman soldiers. His description of the protection that God provides is based on the Roman armour. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on not one piece of armour, but the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil wants your life. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Today and every day we are called to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girded with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Your belt holds up your pants, 
with truth encircling you, you will never be caught unprepared. Christ's perfect righteousness guards the heart. We are unworthy, but Jesus is full of perfect love. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. God's soldiers are not out to kill, but to save. The good news of the believer brings peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Many doubts and distractions are hurled at the believer. Faith fends them off. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Salvation is a choice made in the mind of every believer. Salvation is a gift. Choice is power. God's Spirit controls the sword. To the Christian, the word, the Bible is powerful. To others, it is foolishness. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. That is our duty. Pray always so that we are protected. Pray in the Spirit and watch him therefore unto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel saves lives. And that is our commission. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 13, it simply says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Not only does our protection come from God, so does the strength to keep going. God truly is our everything. As the battle rages around us, God wants us, his people, to feel safe enough to spend time with him in his word. From re reading will come heeding, and from heeding comes peace, joy, and love. And in 1 John 2, 5, it says, But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know that we are in him. And you know, we are not allowed to compromise. We are to simply obey. While studying with another baptismal candidate, the thought came from the can candidate, I wonder if there is an acronym for the letters S-I-N. We were actually talking about sin. The middle letter of sin is I. The middle letter of pride is also I, and that was the reason why Satan fell. And so we looked at this word sin, and we thought, well, is there some acronyms for it? But since I spoke to him, yeah, I did find some. And um, it's not working... Can you just flick over, Lou? Souls, next one, in need is the acronym for sin. But then I thought, yeah, okay, when we were discussing this, we actually turned it around to N-I-S. What could the acronyms be for N-I-S? And it simply says, now I am saved. Isn't that wonderful? So sin, as bad as it is, we can always know that we, are, that we are saved. So the candidate said, well, now I'm a this Christian. I'm a saved Christian. And to close this morning, I'd like to just read another, another little uh, poem that I received from a customer of mine. And this poem is written by Mrs. Verna May Thomas, and it's called The Cross. It says, I carry a cross in my pocket, a simple reminder to me of the fact that I am a Christian no matter where I may be. This little cross is not magic, nor is it a good luck charm. It isn't meant to protect me from every physical harm. It's not for identification for all the world to see. It's simply an understanding between my saviour and me. When I put my hand in my pocket to bring out a coin or a key, the cross is there to remind me of the price he paid for me. It reminds me too to be thankful for my blessings day by day and to strive to serve him better in all that I do and say. It is also a daily reminder of the peace and comfort I share with all who know my master and give themselves to his care. So I carry a cross in my pocket reminding no one but me that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life 
if only I'll let him be. Amen? And that is my prayer for each and every one of you as we step over the threshold to a new year. And I'm sure and I know that God has got great plans for us in 2010. In closing, I'd like to do our, a little something traditional for this time of year. I'd like you to all come out of your seats and come down and hold hands together as we sing uh, our last song. So could you all come down quietly, slowly to the front. Thanks. Can't come around in a bit more of a circle, folks. Just squeeze in. Come on. We've got our our musicians are in place. Okay. And uh, don't leave that gap closed, you guys. Close it up there. That's great. Yeah. Judith and Ian, come in. Okay. We have this hope. We can see it on both screens, uh, folks. So uh, we'll be ready. Dearest Heavenly Father, we come before you with over-thankful hearts for the way that you lead daily in our lives, Lord. Heavenly Father, you are so great, you are so gracious, so merciful and loving that we don't deserve any of it. But Father, you counted us worthy by giving us your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to claim the promises, to accept him as our Saviour and to follow him and all his examples, Lord, throughout his life that he gave us. Heavenly Father, as we too all step over the threshold into a new year. We ask that you be especially with each and every one of us, granting us good health and, Lord, helping us to serve you in such a capacity that we've never done before is our prayer through your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.